tema principale, quello del fischio del pugno di dollari. Composer Ennio Morricone's roots lie in the experimental, but at the time of his emergence in the 1940s, the music industry wasn't seeking such harmonies. Eager to share the melodies he created with the masses, Morricone decided to turn his attention to cinema. Finding a kindred spirit in upstart director Sergio Leone, the Italian musician created a series of soundtracks that instantly became classics. Today, critics label his melancholic pieces an essential ingredient of the spaghetti western iconography. At the height of his global popularity, Morricone decided to switch gears. Setting his sights on the Italian thrillers called the Giallo, he was finally able to exercise his abstract style. I know nothing about Mr. Rosani's relations with the Seckles girl. And... Making the most of the times he was living in, the respected artist used the groovy beats of the 1970s for the Euro crime movies he worked on. His scores from this period were so closely associated with the particular genre that many filmmakers from other countries used his music without permission. The Rome native's later career saw him collaborate with filmmakers who discovered the groundbreaking composer through his pioneering earlier works. One such collaboration finally brought Morricone a Best Music Score Oscar in 2016, almost a decade after his honorary award. Got room for one more. To speak more about Ennio Morricone, I am joined from London by music critic Jonathan Vaz. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jonathan. Now, tell me about Morricone's early years before he even got famous. Okay, so he's, uh, and this year he's coming up to uh, being 90. So he was born in 1928. Uh, his father was a trumpeter. He in turn also uh, was a trumpet player, um, studied it at, uh, at the conservatory, uh, where as well as arranging melodies, he was rapidly identified by his peers as they were suggesting to him he should be composing as well. And uh, his early years took him from being just a player um, in bands that played uh, in, during the war to soldiers, firstly of the German army and later of the American, uh, to American soldiers. Um, but from there, very much into a, a period of, com of composition. Well, Morricone has uh, said before that he gets annoyed for being remembered by his uh, Western compositions. Uh, taking that into consideration, what are some of his best works? Well, of course, his Westerns, uh, and those Westerns of the 1960s were directed by Sergio Leone, who always recognized Morricone's talents from having been, at, in fact, a, at school with him. But if that was in the 1960s, the 1980s were to see a uh, remarkable uh, change in the work for which Morricone became famous for. And I think it's also fair to remember that over his career, he has written 500 movie scores, which is a, an incredibly prolific amount. But in the 1980s, uh, we saw him write um, Once Upon a Time in uh, America, uh, there was, which was of course another Leone movie, uh, there was The Mission, uh, and finally uh, there was Tornatore's Cinema Paradiso. Interestingly for The Mission, uh, there was a lot of talk that Morricone should have won the Oscar for that. It's a year that he felt he was robbed of the Oscar. Um, and it was in the 1980s that there was a huge amount of beautiful, famous work that was uh, being composed by him in addition to so much other material. The Untouchables, um, of course, was another great movie of his in that decade. All right. Um, 
Now, Jonathan, what is it about his compositions that truly makes it different and so popular? Morricone has a remarkable love and understanding of the story that he is scoring for. I should have mentioned in the 1980s um, with, uh, with the mission, um, there were three themes of music that, that, that came into that story. Uh, there was the music of the, uh, the Renaissance, set at the time, the music of the Reformation, and the music of the local tribal music of South America in which the movie was, 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 um, was set. And it's, it's Morricone's ability to understand the human nature in the story that is presented to him that makes his melodies so special. Uh, for once upon a time in the West, most of his melodies were actually composed before the film was photographed. And Sergio Leone will talk about the fact that, that sometimes the music was played on set uh, while, while the movie was being photographed, uh, precisely because of the atmosphere that Morricone captured. He also makes a fabulous use of the human voice as mm -hmm. an instrument. If you think of the choral work that supports um, a lot of the mission, if you think of the soprano voice in The Ecstasy of Gold, it is, it, it's spine tingling just to think of it. Yes, his work is absolutely exquisite. Jonathan Boz, thank you so much for speaking to us on Showcase today. Thank you.